Hello everyone. In the last episode we spoke about body position and I explained how body position is connected to change of direction. And change of direction is quite different depending on whether it's under braking or under acceleration. So let's start with change of direction uh, under braking because that's the easy one. Um, and I'll explain why. Change of direction under braking is easy because when you are braking, you have more weight on the front, bigger contact, so more grip with the front tire, so you can put more energy into the handlebars without that front letting go. And uh, also, you don't need the other tools that you use, meaning weight on foot pegs and your other body weight as much or at all, uh, because uh, imagine under hard braking, there's not much weight you can put on, on your feet because um, you can imagine the bike's already trying to throw you over the screen. If you stand up, you're going to go over the screen. So in general, it's easier. You just have to. Everyone knows that feeling where if you ride a bike where you a counter steer, basically, you're pull, pulling on the left bar to turn right and pushing on the right bar. It makes the front wheel turn that way, go over that way so you can lean the opposite way. And once you get over a certain effort, you can stop putting effort into the bars and let the front tire, the bike's geometry and trail take over. And they do the job. If it's set up well, they do the job alone. <clears throat> then you can just hold the bike down uh, with your knee, uh, hands as well. I like to use my knee more and just let the bike and tires do their work. So. Let me give you an example of the one I love because I love the corner and it showed me clearly how much better um, I can change direction under brakes than not under brakes. You know? So anyone that's ridden, uh, ridden Hareth circuit, the last double right, really fast turns. As you're approaching those, you're coming out of a second gear right hander, second gear stop gearing on a thousand, hook third, get up on the paint. And if you don't brake, the, the, there's a series of problems. If, you don't, if I don't brake, it doesn't give me confidence to keep that throttle wide open for longer because I'm going to go above the speed that I think I can get through that corner. And you, so you start going, oh, I think it's about this speed, you know. Then when you do change direction, you can't put as much effort into the bar because the front's not loaded like it is on the brake. So yeah, I put effort in. So it's, you haven't won on the acceleration, you haven't won on the change of direction, and then once you're in the turn, then it's pretty similar. But then as I build up speed, I go, right, I'm gonna hold that throttle on a bit longer, you know, so it goes above the speed I can make it through the corner. Then, but I can, I've got confidence to do that because I know I'm gonna brake and scrub that extra speed back off. And back down to the speed I go through the turn. It's only a dab, you know. So up on the left on the paint in third, then bang, dab, dab the brake. The same, just a moment after. There's no gear changes or anything. Effort into the bar, more effort because of that front's loaded, big contact patch. I can go. Rrr. Then as I keep on the brake as the bike tips over, safe to half lean. Fast boys will go further, you know, but safe to half lean, and then I release the brake. The other thing that gives you confidence is you have control. It's not like I mentioned in an earlier episode where um, without the brake on, you don't have as much control of everything, you know. So I'm braking, quick turn over it, scrubbing that speed back down, now I go now. Let it go when I know the speed's right and I've got it aimed in the right direction, I'm at the right lean angle, bang. Then it's just a matter of letting that uh, handlebars go because I don't want to put any effort and um, input into that front tire. I want to let it do its work. It's got more chance of hanging on if I don't upset it, you know. So then I just commit myself to the corner, upper body, face, where I want to go and hold the bike down with my left uh, thigh around the fuel tank. Next up is 
change of direction, not on the brakes. So um, change of direction under acceleration. Um, I've got two different examples here for you that I like, so it makes it easier to get it across, and they're quite different. Um, for example, the first one is a chicane that is not under brakes, and the second one is more accelerating out of a left and trying to get the bike to turn right to go into a right-hander, and so the front has no weight on it in that area. Start with the first one. Uh, was it Le Mans? I was teaching 2011, you know, uh, so I'd been teaching like three years. It was the first year of Moto Voodoo with our own machines. A young racer had rented 600 of us, and um, he was going through the chicane at Le Mans every lap. This is on the first day. Every time he'd go through the chicane on the turning left and he'd want to flick right, the front was just going, wow, wow, out of control. Like, And then flick right. I was like, oh. And among other little tips I had from I came in and then I went, please stop doing that in the chicane. You're going to crash, you know. And he said, well, how do you do it? And uh, it was a really good question because I didn't know how. Um, that's the cool thing about teaching. That was like nine years ago and you slowly build up. I said to him, honestly, I don't know that point give me uh the next session i'll go figure it out you know working with someone else writing and i'll come back to you on that one but you know here's some other things to work on so i went out in the next session and took note of how i was doing it quickly through the chicane safely and uh here it is you know so breaking towards that chicane in le mans um trying to keep right then breaking in then at a certain point you release the brake get it on its side of like always hanging on with my uh, leg around the tank trying not to put too much effort in the bar uh, right in the center there letting the geometry tires do the work then I'm back on the throttle and pulling it left because the more left you get the better exit you get out of the chicane on the right um, but here's where the change of direction came from and it surprised me and that is the faster I wanted to do it the more throttle I know this is risky especially if you haven't got traction control but the more throttle I used accelerating from the left and what that did was not only get it left to get a good line out but that pressure on the rear tire and you you'll know, you see the world championship boys they get to the point where they're leaving dark lines uh, while building up speed turning left and it's not just speed it's pressure the suspension gets pushed down the tires everything's building and when they, when they shut the throttle and flick it right, um, this is what happened. I flicked it right, and um, the bike flicked, unloaded all that energy, and flicked right. It felt like twice as quick as I could have done it just by going like this on the bars, you know? It was like releasing that energy, flick right, I stopped putting input into the bars because then the bike was already changed in direction and uh, I didn't want to lose the front on the right. I let the bike do its job, you know, let the tyre uh, grip and then get ready to crack that throttle for the exit. Right, second example I've got for you is Motorland Aragon turn one to turn two. And uh, because that left to right is further apart than Le Mans Chicane, um, the focus is more on acceleration because you need to win time between the corners uh, more than you do at uh, Le Mans. So this makes it hard because you're when you're accelerating like that, putting all your effort into it, the front is not on the ground. You know, it's touching so softly you can't put big effort into the bar to get it to change direction. So you need to use all of all of the tools in the toolbox on top of a little bit of effort in the bars and here's how I do it and uh, it's great to watch the top boys in the world there I love it so out of the left um, you can't get on the throttle too early because it's going to go run too wide and if you run too wide all you're going to do is turn that acceleration area into a great big S and you won't be able to hold it full so yeah you've got to crack the throttle but you've got to keep it turning left to get it up I don't go all the way to the edge of the track, leave a meter or two, get it up and go. Focus on going forward. And while you're going forward, you're fighting to get it left a little bit before changing direction right. And uh, because the front is only skimming the ground, sure, the left's not too hard, 
but when you need it to flick right, um, you need to use, when I say all the tools in the toolbox, that's um, sure, you need to put a little bit of effort into the bars, but you need to keep your upper body and chest and head so low, so to make that mini minimum wheelie, you know, you're trying to hold the front on the ground, you're putting weight into both feet, the balls of my feet, hard as I can, forward as far as I can, chest as low as I can, Mick Doohan, um, I always used to watch him, because um, he was the best guy at the time, but also it was clear how much effort he put, there's some great pictures around of, of exactly this, you know, so he's hard on the throttle, chest low, um, forward as far as he can, weight on his feet, his bum's not even on the seat, I'm not saying standing up, but you know, off the seat, because weight on the pegs, all these things are anti-wheelie, all of them, and then, so you've got a little bit more contact with the front than you would have had, so you can put a little bit more effort into the bar than you could have, so then all the other things go to work, once the bike's upright, you can push on the right peg with your foot more than the left, you know, it's all on there, and commit your upper body your whole body to the right and by committing your body to the right you can put more weight on that right peg at the same time you know it's like standing on that side you know to help the bike turn right and uh again you're still on the throttle then the main work's done and then you can shut the throttle into turn um, two and let the geometry tires like always go to work while you're hanging on to the bike holding it down with your left knee Right, to finish up this episode, believe it or not, I have a question that I want answering from the listeners. And I'm serious, I don't know the answer to this question. I'm hoping there's a clever engineer out there, a crew chief, uh, somebody, you know, uh, or a top rider that can tell me why we do this. Um, here it is. I was just mentioning um, in just a section just before how... I come out of the tight right at Hareth and blast down to the last double right. And with third gear, it's going fast, come out in second, hook third. There, and especially onto the back straight at Hareth, every time I fire out there, half lean, driving out of there, it goes over a brow and it wants to wheelie and get unstable there. And I've got my right bum cheek off, my lower body's off that side, you know, still from coming out of the corner. And as the bike comes up, to stop it wheeling and to give stability, I throw my head to the left-hand side of the bike. So my lower body is on the right, my upper body's on the left, and it works. I've got to do it every lap for anti-wheeling and stability, but how does it work? What does it do? I look forward, honestly look forward to your answers.